for our freedom. It was for freedom, it was for freedom, it was for freedom. I'd like to share with you my heart in something very important for you and your success that you must know, you must understand and walk in or you will not walk in freedom for very long. It's called endurance, steadfastness, perseverance, sometimes translated patience, endurance, the ability to stay the course when it's difficult. I wanna share some key truths from the scripture. Let's, we're gonna look at a lot of scriptures. Let's start with the book of Romans chapter five, verses one through four. He'll thank me for this. If you go through the whole thing, it says, therefore, having been made righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ relationship or unified as a gift of righteousness. We have this peace through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. We'll be talking that about the grace in which we stand and that liberated us in future episodes. And we boast, that's the literal, we boast in hope of the glory of God. In other words, we can see the glory of God is coming in our life, short term and long term. And we boast about it. We can boast in it. We recognize it. It's coming. And we, 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 we enthusiastically boast. Now, I'm talking, not talking about religious pride type idea. What we're talking about is boasting, meaning we're so sure, we're certain the glory is coming. And the glory of God is his, one way to put it is his nature manifested in the physical realm to the senses and overtaking the physical realm, knocking things up, making them messy. In other words, undoing, overturning what the enemy has done, what humans have done, and him cutting it, coming in and sitting there as king and taking over and just knocking negative things out and smothering people with mercy and compassion and joy and peace and goodness and liberation and just the feeling of liberation that we already have in Christ, all the good things. But anyway, him being his, his glory is um, a, him appearing to the physical senses. And it, it happens in different ways, but the point being is his him, his essence, his nature. We have that coming to us. It's coming. It's coming to us because we now, Christ is in us. But we're going to go on here. It says we exult in that, but look at this. It says not only this, but we also boast in our tribulations. Now, tribulation is an important word to understand. So I'm going to break it down for you. Tribulation means it could also be translated suffering or affliction. So it's negative things that come against us. They oppose us. They, stand, they come against us. All right. But he said in those while dealing with those things. He boasted no matter what. And he said, we also boast in the midst of those. Knowing, now this is the key, that tribulation, in other words, affliction. Now, these are actually temptations. Um, the, the suffering, affliction, tribulation, the temptation to doubt, temptation to fear, temptation to quit, temptation to have unbelief or to accuse God. Or There's so many possibilities, but it's a temptation also. Anyway, he says, knowing that tribulation brings about endurance. In other words, if you don't have any opposition, then you will never endure. And endurance is very important because it says endurance brings about approval is the literal. Approval. Approval means you pass a test. You're shown. Your character is proven. You're shown worthy of a reward of praise, of moving to another level or dimension in life spiritually. So approval is also something we want. We want to gain approval. Now, just teaching very thoroughly here, there is an approval that comes from being in Christ. 
approved in Christ. The Bible says in the book of Romans, elsewhere, we are approved in Christ. Actually, I think it's 2 Corinthians, but regardless, we're approved in Christ, we're beloved, we are accepted in the beloved, highly favored in the beloved. All that happened for free because we were put in Christ. But there's also no approval that happens for passing our tests, for enduring beyond the time of temptation, beyond the time of testing. When we do, we receive approval. That approval is visible in the physical realm. It blesses our life. Things change. We grow. We flourish. Amazing things happen. And it's approval. In other words, God stamps past. You don't have to take that class again and move on to the next because we're in training. This whole life is is that. So approval is what we're looking for in this whole thing. We're not looking to just have the free aspect of being in Christ and then just live a life of defeat or not passing tests. No, it's, there's opposition. So either we're passing our tests or we're not passing our tests. Either we're growing or we're stagnating, going backwards. And we don't want that. We want to go forward. Any true child of God, unless they're deceived, wants to go forward. And so as we, the thing is for that, we need tribulation. That's what it said right there. So now we're going to get into this more because you got to understand the whole the whole aspect. But this is tribulation for the sake of endurance. In other words, it's not based on ignorance. There is a suffering that comes from ignorance, and that's alleviated by the word of God, by the truth, by growth, by exposure to really good truth. And that takes time too, and patience sometimes, for sure, patience. But there's also uh, suffering that comes from foolishness. We don't want that ever, <laughs> and uh, painful, or, or naivety, or other things. But I'm sharing with you, this is the suffer, the tribulation that comes, and it brings about endurance. And it says endurance brings that proven character, in other words, um, approval, and approval, hope, in other words, once you get approval, boom, it is so awesome. And it sets in your mind a good image about the future that you're going to get approval again. You know, you can do this. You passed the test. Wasn't as hard as you thought it was. Even if in the end you're like, whoo, that was hard. No, you've passed. That means you were harder. You were stronger. You were more powerful than anything that could be thrown at you. And then you're going to keep enlarging your strength, more room has been made for more capacity of the glory of God. So you can just use it to help people and to increase and grow and, you know, meet your, your destiny and all those things. It's just amazing. And then you also have a more steadfast hope. You look in the future and you say, I got this. And that's important. So these are things that come through endurance. Um, it says in the book of Hebrews, it says it is for, um, it is for discipline that we endure. In other words, the door discipline there doesn't mean like you did wrong and you get a spanking. It's talking about training. God is training his own, his children. His, we're sometimes called in the Bible athletes. We're his athletes. He's training us. We're on his team because he wants us to be the best. And so we endure for that purpose. So don't feel like it's a, it's a um, strange thing. That's what First Peter says about it. It says, do not be surprised as if some strange thing happened to you. Don't be surprised that the burning is what the literal is that comes upon you for your testing. And then it says, but rejoice insofar as you share the sufferings of Christ so that when his glory is revealed, we're talking about his glory. It's revealed now in stages. It's going to be revealed fully when he comes back. But he said, when it's revealed, you will rejoice with exceeding joy. And that's the approval. That's the glory all that stuff it is it is a cause and effect. You pass your test, you get it. You know, it's not that, you know, our basis is the grace of God, free, freely given. And we were put in Christ by God. And it was through faith. We simply heard the message, believed, and gave our life to Jesus. So we can't claim any boasting on that. That's our foundation. That brought us into Christ. Now, what are we going to do with it? Paul said, receive not the grace of God in vain. That means the grace is a foundation. And now we need to work. Work while it is day, Jesus said. 
for night is coming when no man can work. So work is good. It's just as long as it's not out of context, but we're working because we were recreated in Christ for good works that God has appointed for us to walk in. That's what it says in Ephesians 2.10. So the good works is on the path of our destiny and they're exhilarating, and, but there's a learning process too. So we're learning through endurance. So let's look at the next scripture, James 1, 2 to 4 and verse 12. It says, consider it all joy, my brothers. We looked at this recently. When you encounter various, or no, the real is when you fall into various or all kinds of temptations, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. So it's saying rejoice because you know that you're going to get more endurance out of this. So when you're, when you face a temptation, actually your faith is being tested. For example, if the word of God says, you do not sin. It says you have the seed of God in you and you cannot continue to sin. Now that's a truth, a revelation, and it works in your life if you believe it and hold on to it. So when you believe it, you grasp it, you understand it, it turns on. It's not, you're not trying to figure it out theologically or force it in your mind or fight it, debate it. No, you just accept it as a child. It comes in your mouth, goes down your being and it just lights you and you say, I have the seed of God himself in me, divinity. I can't sin. The real me can't sin and I'm going to walk as spirit as I really am. And therefore, <laughs> I'm fine. Just as the scripture says, we died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? It's impossible. It's a wonderful truth in Revelation, the book of, uh, that's in the book of Romans chapter six. So once you get those into you, they allow you to take these hands of faith and pop the enemy, I'm telling you, because he's limited and he's a loser. He was defeated and he is ashamed. And he was put to shame, open shame. He's ashamed. Shame covers his faith. The shame of a loss. He, he, he dug his own pit when he inspired men to crucify Jesus. And Jesus was actually laying down his own life. And Jesus redeemed us over to God. And now in him, we are dominant. Before we even start a fight, we are in triumph in Christ already by grace. So we're standing on that. And now we fight the good fight of faith, meaning we don't let go of that. We walk in the light of that of these things, these truths, what God teaches you. So that's what endurance is about. We'll talk more about it because, but the key is, it says when you're tempted, you're actually being tested. Your faith is being tested. So it's not about just trying to force yourself to do a certain thing, a good thing, a law, you know, like thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not steal. I won't steal, I won't steal. No, 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 no. Book of James chapter one says of his own will. He has brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all his creatures. In other words, we have a new identity. We are brought, born of the truth. We're different now. It's not like we need a law. We need truth, enlightenment. The truth comes through speak, teaching, through preaching, through reading the scriptures. The truth enlightens us. The eyes of our understanding are flooded with light. Book of Ephesians. And then we can walk on another path straight. And that's why it says in Proverbs, it says, he who has understanding walks straight. You see, enlightenment, God's word, God speaking, God opening our eyes. And he does it for us every single day. And we're going to get to that scripture. Paul said, my, my, my inner man is being renewed day by day. Jesus said, Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. How often do you eat food? Unless you're fasting, you're eating every day. Same thing with this, not just the Bible. It is the Bible. It's in the Bible, but it's the living word of God. When you're listening to me right now, truth is coming to you. It's flooding you. It's coming to you fast, powerful, well, sleek. It's the word of God for you for this hour to overturn you know, any opposition that could come against you, or at least some opposition that could come against you, so that you know, and you're grounded in what you're doing right now in your life. That's God's provision for you. And it's renewing, it's changing your mind, your thinking, it's giving you new thoughts from him. And that is the renewal. That's light. That's enlightenment. 
That's enlightening. And that's what we live by. So we feed on that. And that's how we can then walk straight. So what I'm getting at is when we walk according to the light, when we our eyes are fixed on the truth of the light of the gospel, in other words, we're walking by faith, not by sight, then we cannot sin, we cannot fall, and we pass our tests. Our faith is being tested when we're tempted. And when we're facing uh, affliction, tribulation, that's a lot of that is temptation. Another one might be persecution for doing well in life, outshining the enemy and the, 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 the people, and then you get persecuted, and it's an opportunity for glory, future, more glory, because you're going to pass that test, and you cannot be tempted with persecution or, or to, uh, you know, some kind of temptation to do wrong. You can't be tempted beyond what you're able. If you're walking according to spirit and according to the love for God, if you're loving God, you can't be because he works out everything for the good of those who love him. You cannot be tempted beyond what you're able. It says he will provide the way of escape so that you can stand up under it. And what is the way of escape? We talked about it before. It's light that's going to come to you as you seek it in that, in that hour. Beforehand, of course, you got to prepare. But in the hour, when you fall into, not sin, I'm not talking about sin, fall. I'm talking about when you fall into various temptations, your faith is being tested. There is an appointed and attached escape route for you to take an elevator system of the word so that when you walk in, the door closes, the word, you're encapsulated in the truth of the word, and you're going up fast, and you are breaking through any and all limitations, and you're going to a place you've never been before because um, you're passing a test. It means you're advancing to a higher new place with him. Your relationship is clear. The atmosphere clears. You enjoy his voice better, more. You experience more. Your body experiences more. Your body on earth of the glory of God that comes through you. So it's wonderful how this all works. But now, this is what I want to share with you. You see, because he's a good father. He's training you. All right. So I think we'll go back to the verse. Um. But doesn't it sound fun? Let me go before going back to the verse. Isn't it great to endure? If you imagine, if you understand how it works, that that's how you get, you went past your test. And I'm going to tell you how to endure before this is over. It's a glorious truth. But if you can endure, and you can, if you do endure, you're going to experience so much peace. You're going to experience the glory of God. You're going to experience so many benefits. It is so worth it to dig in your heels into the word of God and endure beyond the temporary temptation, uh, frustration, situation, distraction, all right? You have to endure. But now when people don't endure, they stop short at all God has for them as far as blessings. And that's what it says. If we look more at the scriptures on these, um, you know, basically he's, God has prepared things for those who love him. And it says, how do you know if you love him? It says, if you obey his commands. So part of that is endurance. Jesus said, endure to the end and you'll be saved. He said, if you endure in the book of Revelation, I believe it's chapter 10, it says, or chapter two, verse 10, I think it is, or somewhere in there, it says, um, endure. It says, since you held on to the word of my endurance, you know, I'm going to do this for you, such and such. And, and he says, endure even to the point of death. And I will give you the crown of life. So we take the word with us, even if it's to the grave, physically, because we're going to rise up and get the crown of life. So there's the crown. And so there's the reward. There's amazing things that happen on the other side of endurance. Your feet get dusted off. You get cleaner than ever before. You just feel different. You feel better. You're brighter. It's because you chose. Now, only anyone can ever endure who chooses to endure as an individual disciple, as one who stands on their own and says, I'm going to do this. No person, someone like me can teach and make it easier. But in the end, it's you. The crowd doesn't endure. They run to and fro and then blame, gossip and everything else. But disciples are willing to go the distance. Now, some disciples quit. 
Let that not be your case. You can endure. And as you endure, inside you're being changed, rearranged. All this stuff in the inside is changing, forming, growing inside your mind, your soul, and all this. You're being equipped for your next season. The real you is coming out and emerging. The spirit you, the Superman, is coming out. And it, it, it has no, knows, knows no bounds. And you're learning to, lit, to lean on, really, to walk as him or her spirit rather than as your past experiences leaning on things that lessons that you've learned or things that you think you have down, you know, as far as control and, you know, we've always done things. No, no, that's not what God's looking for. He's looking for us to go from glory to glory. And that is in our future. Say with me, glory is in my future. I, re I boast in the hope of the glory of God. And then if a tribulation comes along, I boast in its face too and say, because I'm still God's going to work it out for my good. Okay, so I've spoken long on that. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is break this into another segment for you.